In this tutorial, we are going to model a chair. This video is a part of our full course, which you will find that at artstudio313.net. To make the most of your experience and stay up to date with our latest videos, please like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification icon to receive instant updates whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions, suggestions or requests for specific topics, Feel free to leave a comment in our videos or reach out to us with email. Without any further ado, let's jump directly into the videos. In this video, we are going to model a chair which is going to be placed in our little area. If I turn on modifiers, you will be able to see that I've made a seat like this. Let me turn off the overlays for a second. This is the image reference that I got my inspiration from. The main one looks something like this. You can also search up good references. I'll leave it on another monitor. Let's start from the beginning to be able to see the procedure. I'm going to drag it here and use it as a source. Press Shift S, click on the cursor toward origin. We will snap it in the world center. Add a cube. Press 3 for faces. Select these two faces. Afterwards, inverse the selection by holding Ctrl I. Delete the rest. This is a very simple shape. Press tab, then add a loop cut. Remove the left halves. Our origin point is in a great position. It is right in the center of the object. You can place it in this corner if you would like to. Currently, whatever scaling and rotation will be done based on the point. Add a mirror modifier. I've added two loop cards on the lower area and another two on the top. From the right orthographic view, I would like to align them in wireframe mode. We can adjust those later furthermore. In the meantime, we will move the objects approximately. Bring this up slightly. Make the same adjustment accordingly. Later, we will add some tiny details. Apply more cuts from this area, one in the middle. From the top angle of view, slide them after the vertex selection with tapping on G key twice. You can also turn the mirror one off for a second. Move each of them according to my adjustments. Drag them in X axis. Follow my steps carefully to fit this area.
Look at it from the side orthographic view. We need to work on this part furthermore after making sure you are already in wireframe mode. Wireframe mode allows us to select the points which you will not be able to select them in other modes. Select these edges and bevel them afterwards by Ctrl B key combination. Align them in wireframe mode. We have successfully made these two so far. It is needed to work on more in order to get the best shape possible. Press F2 for edges. Hold down Alt and click, then Shift Alt to get all the surrounding parts. Switch to the right angle of view by holding down 3. When you are extruding it, a slight movement will do the trick. You can cancel the extrusion by right clicking. As I have mentioned before, the extrusion will remain saved. Hold down Shift while scaling it. Press E to extrude it once again. Scale it again, but this time hold down Y and G. Drag it in Y and Z axis. We are looking for a smooth corner likewise the image reference. Let me show you the picture again. They are smooth enough so if somebody is leaning in one of them, it will not count the body edge. Scale it in X and Y, because later on we are going to add subdivision. Solidify is not that useful in this case. Pull this specific area down slightly to give it a small depth. It should look good enough. However, there seems to be some issue. Make sure the clipping is enabled. Drag it in X axis. It will be snapped automatically. Align it from the top as well in Y axis. We need to push towards each other in. We have achieved the shape we were looking for, a subdivision as well so it gives the natural appearance. 
Set it to level 2 for a smoother result. Some of these parts are slightly larger. Click on the Shade Smooth from the menu. Scale it from this angle. Follow my steps accordingly. Delete the previous one. It is time to model the soft set. Hide subdivision for a moment. Select these points from the top. Try to pull them up or you can select these instead and drag them down. Deselect these and move the rest more to the bottom. I don't quite feel the depth. Let's select this area And I the proportional editing with O key, press GY afterwards, then GZ. And hide the subdivision once again. Check the result. It looks more like our image reference. Follow my steps accordingly. Pull the selected ones to the outside. Turn it on. Select this area and press G and Y. Pay attention that we have this part already. This is what we have in image reference as well. Well, this particular part is slightly high. Lower it. We have modeled this chair so far, and join us for the next video. It is time for the legs. I have two objects within it. Turn off the wireframe mode for a second. One is the main legs, and the other part is the cut, which is a plastic that is seemingly connected to the wooden leg to the chair. It might not be that clear in the reference image, but I have implemented what I have imagined was correct. This is what the plastic one looks like and the legs too. We need to add a cylinder with Shift A. 
Make sure the vertices value is set to 22. Let me transfer this to chair collection. Hide the rest of them, even the background. So we will easily follow that what exactly will happening. From the top angle of view, select these two faces. Deselect the extra. We can simply make a selection of them from this area. Later, I'm going to extrude them. Also model this specific shape. Bring it next to the reference. Press tab. In edit mode, press O to enable the proportional editing. Make sure you're already in wireframe mode. In solid mode, you're able to select the front only. Press E for extrusion in Z axis. This height should be good enough. From the top orthographic, let me drag this object next to the previously modeled one. Make a selection of the side faces. Deselect anything else by holding down Ctrl. I've extruded it in order to get this loop cut. Use the extrude along normal option. Add shortcut is Alt E. Push it inside slightly. Delete the top faces. Press 2 to enable edge selection. Click on the edges, then press F to fool them. This part is not that complex or essential. Let's continue in the meantime. We are going to design the other part which is left. This shape is not too difficult to model. Duplicate the bottom object with Shift D shortcut. Press B to separate it. Set its origin to geometry. Place the 3D cursor on the top. Click on the separated part. Snap the selection to the cursor with Shift S. Scale it down from the top view angle. Drag the object down. Press Tab. In edit mode, switch to faces with tricky. We need to fill this up by holding down F. Without that, it is nothing but an edge. Press number the slash. Extrude it towards the 3D cursor. Select the side faces, press Alt to extrude them along normals. We have achieved our desired shape easily. Click on this face and set the face by holding down I. Extrude it with E key. It is time to add the bolt and knot. I will add a bunch of loop cards on this specific area. 
Bevel it with Ctrl B. Initialize segment value to 2. Right click on the selected faces. The loop tools are available through an add on. Go to References in Edit tab. Find the add on from the left of the window. Search Loop Tool, which is released with Blender. Check its checkbox. Save Preferences. Press Ctrl S to save the changes we have made so far. Select the front and the back faces. I've done it in wireframe mode as you can tell. Let's increase the space in between them. Press G twice, then I slide it. Repeat the same process. Inside the face, right click on the selected part. Choose the circle option. You can also scale it. Scale them in their own place after clicking on the individual origin from the menu. Insert face once more. I don't think we should press E in this situation. With this condition, press Alt E to extrude it along normals. Because of this object, we cannot extrude it further. Drag it down slightly since we have modeled this part successfully. We need to model the parts left. Let me press Ctrl Z to undo it from deletion. Press W to switch to select box tool. I will add two loop cards and scale them. Hold down S with Shift Z because I do not want to scale it in Z axis, but only in X and Y axis. Dissolve edges after selecting these particular edges. If you would like to make this smoother, then consider adding another loop cut. Press 3 for faces. Switch to bottom orthographic by Ctrl 7 key. Inset face with eye shortcut. Focus on it with number the slash. Press E for extrusion. You can make your own adjustments. The left one has a better shape overall. Press S, Shift Z on the selected area. I'm going to delete the reference. Push this area more to inside. Press 3 for face mode. Extrude these two while switching to bounding box. You can also make them thinner by scaling them in Y axis and Z axis. It should look good enough. These where the bolts will go. We need to add more of them in the other area. Press T for edges. Add another one with Ctrl R. Press T for faces. Make a selection of these two faces. Actually, we are repeating the same we did for the previous one. 
pull them closer with tapping on G key twice. Insert face after selection with I key. Right click, choose the circle option. Set it to individual origin. Scale it accordingly. If it was still on the bounding box, then it would have caused some issues. And set another phrase by holding down I. Press Alt to extrude it slightly. This was not required whatsoever. However, I wanted you to get familiarized further with hard surfaces modeling. For now, we are going to add the bolts and the nodes on the model. Click on this specific area, press Shift S, snap the 3D cursor to this place. I'm going to use a simple cylinder instead of this bolt. Scale it in Z axis. Insert the face, then adjust its size accordingly. So it would start looking like a bolt. As you are able to observe, the new one has 42 edges and 44 triangles. This is a sufficient amount for our project. If you want to become active in gaming industry and build game assets, this is an important technique to keep in mind. Decrease object's volume as much as possible. I need to design another shape as well, because I'm going to connect them with a wire. Likewise, the image reference I have already. Select this specific area. Press I to insert the face. Extrude it three times with E shortcut. If you press Ctrl and Numpad Plus, then it will increase the selection. In opposite, if you tap on Numpad Minus, then it will decrease it. Scale it slightly. From this point, drag the middle vertex out. Press Ctrl Number Plus, duplicate it with Shift D shortcut. Separate it by the P key. Snap the origin in the center. Or you can also place it in the front. Set it to 3D cursor. Move the 3D cursor to this specific area with Shift S. Give extra location for the object to go to. We need to merge them. Press Ctrl J. Repeat the same process. This leg is too long. Based on the reference picture, the length doesn't match. We didn't merge this particular part. Join them with Ctrl J. Hold down G and Z. Deselect the top, 
follow my steps accordingly. Adjust it further. This is way more realistic. We are going to make three more copies of the legs with the help of mirror modifier. Join us for the next video. In this video, at the first, I'm going to add a solid flame modifier in order to increase the volume. I don't think it will look alright, because they have crossed each other. However, it should work in a small amount. Or even from outside. This is the before and after result. The only thing to take note of is that here are too many segments. Considering it is a chair, it shouldn't be a concern. It is time to select these objects. Press Shift S to snap the selection to the cursor. Right click, place the origin and treat the cursor. Currently, I would like to move the 3D cursor to center. This part of the bolts needs to be outside. First, we need to rotate this for 45 degrees. Add a mirror modifier first. Set it in X and Y axis. We need to have a center point on this area. For the purpose of this, let's add an empty. It can also be a sphere. Scale it down. Select the object and name it like. Make a selection of the empty with the help of the eyedropper tool. Nothing will mess up them since the modifier is looking for the empty. It works in order too. If we change the location of the empty, then the mirrored objects would adjust their position based on it. Follow my steps. Pay attention to the image reference. The legs are closer on the top, and opposite, they get far from each other at the bottom. We need to implement this. Rotate it for the 5 degrees to have the bolt facing inside. Press R twice for setting a good position for them. Their origin point has a great location. Repeat from the side view. Rotate it in X and Y axis. Drag it up slightly until it connects to the chair. Prevent it from extruding the seat. Select the top and make it flat.
In the reference picture where the wires have connected each leg, from one side we need to have one of these objects. Let me hide this for a second. It already has it from this angle, and it also needs to have one from another side. Select this part. This area should be convenient enough. Press I to insert face. Add a circle from the loop tool. Click on the individual origin from the menu. Scale it. I for insert a face. Extrude it inside. Press shift this. Then shift D. Separate it. Right click. Choose the set origin to 3D cursor option. Select it from here. Click on cursor to select it. We need to rotate it in the axis for 90 degrees. I'm guessing that we should add another one here. For that matter, we didn't really think it thoroughly. Select one of these. This doesn't not look logical. Let's add a 3D cursor on this spot. Press Shift D, then Shift S. Pick the selection to cursor option. We have it here too without digging it. Join this. Let me remove this first. Make a selection of these two. Select the leg next, since it has a mirror modifier. If we press Ctrl J, then we will be able to observe that the added nail has also appeared on the rest of the legs. The conditions which we select them is essential. Based on my knowledge, it is better to make a selection of this first, then press J on the leg. A reactive object is the leg itself. It can even affect the naming process. So let's add another object without mirror modifier, likewise the cube. If you select accordingly, then the active object is the cube in this case. Pressing Ctrl J will cause them both to be named as cube and no modifiers will be left. The order which you choose objects is important in active object recognition. Let's continue. Turn on hidden parts. We are going to link these with the help of the curves. Press Shift S, add a Bezier curve with the Shift A, pick selection to cursor. Snap the selection to cursor. Rotate it. This part should be simpler. Repeat the same. These are all mirrored. So it is hard to define what actually is happening. Because of the same issue, we cannot press edit tab. Apply the mirror with Ctrl A. Click on the curve. Press V for setting the handle type. Then pick the vector option. It has started from top to bottom by looking at the image reference, like they have crossed each other. Press Shift S to snap the cursor to selected area and then redo it, but this time selection to cursor. Find geometry from the right of the screen, expand the bevel. Increase the depth. 
we have successfully modeled a verb. Zoom in slightly to check the stumps in detail. Push it in the bolt. Repeat for the opposite part as well. Check the field caps checkbox so it fills it up for us. Push it inside slightly more. Now all you need to do is to duplicate it and connect it to other nails. I will speed up this part and after completing, I will come back to you. Do not forget to save the project with Ctrl S. You can apply the modifier with Ctrl A. However, I will keep the subdivision and solidify. We need to convert this to mesh later when needed. Delete the empty because it is no longer required. Select all and transform them to chair collection. Press M to open up the item tab. Click the scales. The rotation is incorrect. In contrary, the scales are correct. We have designed this so far. Join us for the next video. If you want to support me and this channel, so make sure to visit my website and purchase the full course. And as well, subscribe to this channel so you never miss an upcoming video. Thank you very much and see you in the next.